while back, I created a video explaining how I used the Sega Saturn's complicated DSP chip to perform matrix operations for the 3D and Sonic R. At the end of the video, I said that I'd spotted something in Sega's hardware manuals that didn't make sense, and in fact would make everything I understood about the DSP impossible, so that's why I'm making this video. Here's a quick refresher by me from the past on what the DSP does when it is given the game's world matrix. Every single point and polygon to be drawn needs to be multiplied with this matrix to get it into the right position to be viewed on screen correctly. That's obviously a lot of maths, and that's where the DSP comes in. The DSP is very, very fast at a very small number of very specific things. Here's a block diagram of the Saturn's DSP. Me again from the present here, I'll jump ahead to the part showing how the DSP executes multiple commands at the same time. The AD2 instruction adds the P register to the A register and stores it in the ALU register. We read the next data into the X register, we multiply X and Y into P, we read the next data into the Y register, we move the results of the addition from the ALU register into the A register, and we reset the memory bank 1 register as we need to reuse that data for the next part of the multiplication. So let's see all that execute in one cycle. OK, back to the present. So what we just saw then was the DSP executing six instructions at exactly the same time, which is great and obviously very fast, as they all happen in parallel. To illustrate this, here's an example of the DSP code I used in Sonic R. You can see that each row contains up to six separate commands. The idea of the DSP is that it can execute all six commands at the same time and then moves on to the next line down. Here's a very similar example that Sega sent me as a template for how the DSP code should be written. Again, six instructions per line, all executed at the same time. But now let's have a look at the Sega hardware manual and see how it encoded these commands. Here's the page that talks about the operation commands, and this is how it stores these commands into a single instruction. But if you look below, it says that operation commands can execute these four types of commands concurrently, i.e. at the same time. Four types of commands not six, four. Uh-oh. So these are the four types of commands that can be executed at the same time. ALU control, XBus control, YBus control, and D1 bus control. So let's break down a line of code and allocate each command to one of the four types. So according to the manual, AD2 is an ALU control command. Move MC1, X is an XBus control command. Move mul, p is also an X bus control command. Uh-oh. Move MCO, y is a Y bus control command. Move ALU, a is also a Y bus control command. And finally, move hash 0, ct1 is a D1 bus control command. Phew. Huh. So we can see that this line of code has asked the X bus and Y bus commands to do two operations at the same time, which it can't do, which means that this line of code should really be written like this. AD2, move MC1, X, move MC0, Y on one line, and then move mul, P, move ALU, A, and move hash zero to CT1 on the next, which would take twice as long to execute. So as far as I can see, the most instructions that the DSP can execute in one cycle is hardwired to be four, and yet both my code and Sega's code use up to six instructions on a line. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to have a look at the actual DSP binary file that was used in Sonic R and decode the binary into DSP instructions to see if I can figure out what's going on. Here's the DSP code used in the game in binary. Each group of 32 numbers represents one line of DSP instructions. This is the first instruction in the code to use six instructions on the line, so let's see what's going on. The leftmost two bits of the instruction are for special commands such as DMA and jump. The next four are for ALU control instructions. Looking at the reference manual, we can see that 0110 represents the command AD2. If we look at the DSP code that was programmed, we can see that the first command on the line we are looking at is AD2 as well. So far, so good. The next six bits are for the X bus control commands. Here, the first three bits represent the command, and the next three bits, the data, if any. So we are looking at a command represented by the bits 110. But if we look at the reference manual, there are only three commands. 100 representing moving data to X, 010 representing move mul, p, and 011 representing moving data to P. If we look at the Y bus commands, we get something very similar too. The D1 bus control command correctly translates to moving 0 to CT1. 
Also, the DSP code I wrote has 128 lines, and the data generated by the assembler here is also 128 lines, so it's clearly not adding lines, which means it must be executing all six instructions in one line somehow. So the conclusion I've come to is that there are combination commands that aren't listed in the reference manual. If we look at the Xbus command which we have, which is 110, I think that represents both moving MC1 to X and move MUL, P. So in this instance, if this bit is set, it does the move MC1, X, and if this bit is set, it does the move MUL, P as well. I have no idea why these commands weren't listed, or why we even knew that they would be executed at the same time. I think I based my DSP code on Sega's example, so I guess I never questioned it. Maybe someone watching this video knows for sure, but that's the closest I can get to explaining this mystery. Until next time, goodbye.